Hello again, I am Blunty. Hey, you know what's really weird to me? And I mean really weird, like like stupid weird. The absolute disaster of Redfall's launch is being used to feed into fear, uncertainty, and doubt about a game that's being made from an entirely separate team of developers simply because said developers work for the same publisher. That's stupid, right? People are out there imagining that whatever happened to Redfall in its development can be drawn as a direct line of causality to Starfield. And Redfall being a miserable suckfest disaster currently fueling angry discourse about its boring design, lackluster mechanics, broken NPC AI, lazy design and all the like means, in the minds of some at least, ipso facto, that Starfield will be exactly the same kind of disaster when it launches sometime later this year. And it will be exactly the same kind of embarrassment for Xbox with yet another Xbox exclusive title embarrassing them by failing so hard. And on the one hand, that's so stupid. I can't believe the idea has gained as much traction, as spread as fast and as quickly as it has, because I'm seeing it everywhere right now. In every discussion about Redfall or Starfield or both, big or small, on every corner of the internet I poke at. And on the other hand, I do truly expect Starfield to be a complete screaming garbage fire on launch. Not because Redfall was... And these two games just so happen to have the same publisher, even if their development teams are utterly separate entities under the Bethesda umbrella. No, I have this expectation simply because Starfield is Todd Howard's baby, and Todd Howard is a fraud and a liar, and has demonstrated over and over and over and over and over again that nothing he says should be taken at face value, and every single game he has ever been in a leadership role with has launched with massive issues of its own, and many of them remain bug-filled to this very day, if even underneath all that buggery <laughs> lies a game that people love deeply, despite the technical ineptitude. Todd Howard is, in my consideration, the reason Bethesda is derisively called Bugthesda. His leadership has failed them again and again and again. He simply doesn't care about the technical state of his games. If he did, Fallout 76 wouldn't have launched in the state it was in, for example. Now, back in January, while I was live reacting to the Xbox Developer Direct Showcase livestream thingy, I wasn't very impressed, or indeed interested, in Redfall. This marked a change from my initial attitude towards the game, where I was once interested in it, keeping an eye on it, hoping for more information about it, but the more detailed look we got a few months back revealed to me, pretty obviously I thought, that it was in fact an extremely thin, derivative, uninspired and uninteresting game. It was probably mechanically sound, but very, very soulless from what I saw, much like I find Tom Clancy's The Division to be mechanically sound, but largely soulless and uninteresting. I described it at the time as The Division with vampires, as a matter of fact. It looked to me super cynically made, a, a game by committee, no art, no style, no passion, nothing to say of its own, just a corporate Frankenstein's monster of various live service tropes sewn together in a nearly contemptuous corporate attempt to manufacture yet another mindless live service game, hoping to, ironically enough, vampirically suck money out of a certain type of gamer for as long as they can possibly manage to do so. Turns out, not only was my instinct absolutely 100% correct about Redfall, but the game is so much worse than I gave it credit for, because alongside all my misgivings, the game is also mechanically broken. Just It's just not very well made under the hood. And in fact, the only thing that brought the game back onto my radar after I started just largely ignoring it after that January gameplay reveal, it has been the current loud critical discourse swarming around just exactly how broken, thin, and generally crappy the game is, and how angry people are that they were um, charged money for it. It's a technical mess with endless bugs and performance issues, and even those who pushed through all of that are saying the game itself simply is not very good at its core. And one critic, somewhere, started calling it another Fallout 76 moment for Bethesda, which I think is an idiotic thing to say. Fallout 76 was so much worse. You know why? 
Because people actually care about Fallout. Lots and lots and lots of people, millions upon millions of people care about Fallout and have done for a very long time now. It has decades of fans, passionate and engaged fans. People who were not just disappointed, but insulted by how Fallout 76 was created and the condition at which it was released in. It was far more than the typical bug Thizda mess that was at issue here. It was also the fact that the game looked like Fallout, tried to look like Fallout, but in very few ways felt like Fallout in the eyes of many. And while large updates like Wastelanders, for example, went a large way towards rectifying the lack of Falloutishness in 76, it was still largely too little, too late, and too wrong, uh, and the game has floundered ever since. It's still getting updates bewilderingly, and still has a small but a loyal player base for reasons I do not understand because I've gone back to the game uh, after several updates and yeah it's, it's still not still not good and the horrifically abusive things they have done with the macro transactions mean I will never try the game again. The power suit armor helmet that came with the infamous pre-order special edition of Fallout 76 now sits upon my shelf to this day and to this day I only refer to it as the helm of buyer's remorse. Meanwhile, Redfall is a new IP, and only fandom copium has tried to imagine the ways it might be linked to Dishonored and Deathloop, the last couple of games out of Arcane Studios, the people responsible for Redfall, and I'm sure there's some, you know, pissy little easter eggs laid out in Redfall somewhere hoping to encourage that kind of crap, but it is meaningless. Redfall is its own thing, it's a new IP, it stands alone, it does not have the history or passion that Fallout does. And the fact is, Redfall is not Fallout. No one cares about about Redfall in even a fractional sense compared to how passionate people are about the Fallout universe. So therefore, Fallout 76 was by far the bigger insult to gamers, and calling Redfall a Fallout 76 moment is not just stupid and ignorant, but insulting as well. They are so not the same thing. Which brings us back to Starfield. Again, I absolutely 100% expect it to be overflowing with issues at launch, because it is a Todd Howard signature for a game to do that. And in the impossible arrogance of Todd Howard, they are still using the Creation Engine 2 to build it. A game engine so creaky, so flawed, so spectacularly shitty, it's bewildering to me how they simply do not let it die and move on to a more modern, practical, forward-looking game engine, much like CD Projekt Red are doing right now. They have abandoned their similarly creaky in-house Red engine, responsible for most recently and lastly for Cyberpunk 2077, in favor of a new, modern, forward-looking game engine in the form of Unreal Engine 5, which they're using for all of their future projects, including the Cyberpunk sequel. Meanwhile, Creation Engine 2, being nothing more than a bandaged up, flaking, shambling, and actively rotting ghoul form of the Creation Engine that was used for Skyrim, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, and at whose feet can be laid the innumerable mechanical, UI, and physics bugs that still plague every one of those games to this day. Even Skyrim, which has had no less than 12 years of patches and updates and ports, and it still cannot escape the fetid stench of the creation engine lying underneath it. And all of this underpins that the claim that Redfall can be used as evidence that Starfield will be broken also is just stupid. They're not the same type of game, even at a basic level. They're not on the same game engine. They're not made by the same development teams. They don't have the same game directors. They don't have the same creative leads. The only thing, the one and only thing that they have in common is they happen to be published by Bethesda. Redfall can't even blame its issues on the creation engine, of course, either, because it's on Unreal Engine 4, an engine upon which sits a large number of excellent games, and also some stinkers, and also some very good games with some very severe performance issues, like Jedi Survivor, for one very current example. It sits on the Unreal Engine 4, it has massive performance engines, but it is a good game underneath. And with that example, I can show you that it's not the game engine that it's at, at fault here, it's the developer's choices. That's the problem with Redfall. Meanwhile, Starfield has to contend with both a broken engine in the creation engine and Todd Howard's historically poor choices and bad judgment. The one, and perhaps only, hope 
or at least large supply of copium that Starfield enthusiasts might be holding on to at this point, might grasp for in desperation, in denial, in defiance of all the evidence behind them, is the one thing that has changed significantly about Bethesda since Fallout 76 shat the bed so epically. Four years after Fallout 76 launched, Microsoft purchased ZeniMax, the holding company that Bethesda is a subsidiary of. And with that, Starfield was decided to be made into a flagship title for Xbox, becoming exclusive to that platform alongside the PC release, which might as well be Microsoft exclusive because Linux gamers make up a tiny percentage. And while Redfall is also an Xbox exclusive title, much like I spoke on before about the respective fandoms, Redfall has to stand on its own two feet, triumph or fail. Starfield, however, is expected by many to be, at least spiritually, Fallout in space. Or if you like, Skyrim in space. A very large percentage of people eager for Starfield are existing Fallout and or Skyrim fans. Much like the modern Fallout games, or indeed Skyrim, Starfield is a first-person open-world RPG set to be extremely expansive and very non-linear, a broad and inviting sandbox RPG for players to nearly endlessly explore and poke around in and basically just, just dick around in in as many different ways as you could possibly imagine. And if the other two games are any example, in many, many, many ways that even the developers haven't managed to imagine yet, because gamers, um, well, we're cleverer than developers in some ways when it comes to actually playing these things. Starfield carries a weight of expectations that Redfall simply cannot even imagine. And with that, with those expectations, with that hype, and with it being an Xbox exclusive flagship title comes an undoubtedly large pressure from Microsoft for Bethesda to not frack this up. Xbox can easily survive the fanboy mockery of the exclusive Redfall failing so massively, so embarrassingly. No one really cares that much about it. Redfall is just a proxy for an already existing and petty fanboy brand slave argument system. Redfall failing is no more impactful to Xbox than the identically miserable and complete failure of a similarly new IP that is a PlayStation exclusive in the form of Forspoken. Forspoken is exactly as disappointing, as miserable, as broken, as shitty as Redfall is. It's just on the other side of the exclusivity fence. But Starfield, Starfield is perhaps a make or break moment for Xbox. So one would hope that Microsoft are leaning with a heavy shadow over Todd Howard and putting the pressure on for Starfield to not just launch in an adequate state, not just a good state, but ideally a highly polished state, a superb state. Because Starfield has to be rock solid for it not to be massively embarrassing and indeed damaging to Xbox's brand and reputation and perception. No one with a brain is actually expecting anything but clumsy, buggy ineptitude from Todd Howard's Bethesda. And if Microsoft didn't own them now, and if this wasn't a system-exclusive flagship title, Starfield launching in a typical Todd Howard clusterfuckery bug mess would barely surprise anyone. We'd just go, ha ha, bug thirster hits again. Whoa, what are you going to do? But this time, this time it matters to Xbox as a brand, as a platform. And as a platform that's not actually doing so well right now, either in the market or in the hearts and minds of gamers themselves. Xbox and Bethesda need this to be a great launch. So one hopes, again, that Todd Howard's infamy for being a liar has had his Microsoft overlords questioning every single claim he is making and micromanaging the absolute shit out of that asswipe in the thin hope that Howard does not F us over again. Because I want Starfield to be awesome. I could give a shit about console wars and fandom arguments and who has the best exclusive or some dumb shit or which, which platform has no games. I just want Starfield to be a good game because I'm a gamer and what I care about is enjoying my time playing these games. I want all games to be good, even the ones I don't give a crap about playing. <laughs> but Starfield is indeed a game that I do give a crap about playing because it checks off a lot of my likes, both in the type of game it is, the style of game it is, and the thematics and settings of the game. It is all right up my alley. 
But at this point, the, we just have to wait and see. There is there is a, a, a gameplay reveal apparently on the horizon real soon now. Uh, and the launch is, well, who knows when, sometime later this year. Is it going to get delayed again? I don't know. We don't know. But please, at the, at the very least, if you've learned anything from the ramblings in this video, please at least stop using Redfall as a comparison point because it is not only not very useful, not very relevant, but also kind of ignorant in, in what's happening here. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty. I will catch you next time. Thank you as always to the patrons scrolling up above there.